If you've just unboxed your new electric bike and you're stuck because it looks something like this, don't worry, I'm here to help. There are eight things you should know before you use your e-bike for the very first time. So I'm gonna go through the process, show you exactly what you need to do to get any electric bike set up and ready to roll. Now, before we jump into the video, in the last few videos, I did promise a few giveaways. So let's go ahead and announce our giveaway winners right now. This was one where I said I was gonna give somebody a Rad Power controller upgrade. It would probably make sense that it's somebody who has a Rad Power bike. 2020 Rad Rover, like the idea of quality upgrade, proud owner but would love this upgrade oh he used the thumbs up that's that's good need this as my wife's step through rover kills me if I, as i have 80 pounds on her <laughs> this is how it works guys this is how the giveaway works on these comments i really just read through them and i pick somebody at random rads are gateway drugs to ride who is the last one to comment proud owner of a 2019 rad rover oh but would love this upgrade we're gonna heart it like it, Ryan, you're the winner. Congrats. Please email us. Claim your prize. <laughs> okay. Uh, should I put an emoji in there? Yeah, sunglasses. Ooh, and that because it's free stuff. You are, I don't know if it's Tobler or Tobler. I'm going to say Tobler. Ryan Tobler is the winner for the Rad Power Upgrade Kit. The Ultra Mountain Bike. Oh, I said I was going to give somebody who comments a free hat. So this time, let's do the opposite. And who commented first? Uh, Rich Howell. Love to see this on the Downeyville Downhill. Give it another like. Congrats, Rich. You win the free hat. A bunch of smileys. There we go. Reply. Boom. Rich Howell, you have won a Bolton e-bikes hat. Let's find somebody. Let's give away a multi-tool. Your idea is practical. Okay, you inspired me to take my lovely Brompton out for a spin. These are good comments, guys. Keep these coming. Dropper post would be great. Riding a snap-on fat tire bike modified into e-bike. You know what? Dennis Nolan sounds like he needs a tool for his modified e-bike. Congratulations. What sort of emojis can we put here? Yeah. There's a bunch of tools. We're gonna put all these tools in here. All right, done. So if I announce any winning stuff in other videos, make sure to comment because you never know if you're gonna be the winner of something cool. And we do have more bike giveaways coming up. The number one thing you should do first when you unbox any electric bike is get the battery off the bike and onto the charger. Because if you have the battery charging while you're assembling the bike, and getting everything tuned up, by the time you're done, you'll have a battery that's hopefully fully charged or at least partially charged so you can go take it for your first spin. Now this bike already has, has the battery off, so let me show you how that works on a different bike. Somewhere there's gonna be a key, maybe in an accessory box, it may be zip tied to your handlebars, but first find the keys. Now, if you insert the key, there's two positions typically for a locked and unlocked. Sometimes there's an on and off switch built into the key. Uh, this one right here is just locked on. So we move it to the unlocked position. If you look really closely, there's a little symbol there and most have something. And then we just give it a little push from the back and it slides right off. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in. Okay, so we've got a charger plugged into the wall here, and you'll see there's a little green light right there. And some chargers will have two lights, some will just have one, but they've always got an indicator of some sort. So in this one, we've got a green light that shows up when basically it's not doing anything. So if it's not plugged in, you may have a green light, or if it's fully charged, you'll have a green light. When it's charging, however, so here's our charge port. There's always gonna be a rubber cap or something covering your charge port. We go ahead and plug that in. And then our charger just changed to red. So now we know that our battery is charging. We're gonna leave that there and get the bike set up the rest of the way. Now I've had questions about charging the batteries for the first time. Do you need to charge it overnight? What do you do? Is there a balancing process? And I've seen different recommendations, 
but generally speaking, the first few times, it's possible that the cells could be a little off. In other words, there's a whole bunch of cells inside this battery and there is a circuit in there that balances everything, which is basically good for the overall health and life of the battery. So it's okay if you leave it on there a little bit longer to let it balance. I've seen some people recommend leaving it on there for hours and hours for the first several charges, and I think you can get a little extreme with it. Turns green when it's done, red when it's charging. So as soon as it's green, feel free to take your bike for a spin. So now that you've got the bike in this position, generally the first thing to do is put on the handlebars. Most e-bikes are going to be shipped with the front wheel off and the handlebars off. So you gotta be mindful of the cables and the connectors on any e-bike that you have. You don't wanna twist things around, so you can kind of feel from the factory that there's gonna be a natural order to the cables, if that makes sense. So for these handlebars, we have four bolts on the front of the stem, and we need to pull these all the way out. And this set of handlebars right here, there's actually a crosshair right in the middle, so you know when the stem is centered. If you don't have that, you can either eyeball it and try and get your handlebars centered left to right, or you can take a tape measure and measure from the middle to both ends and make sure you're centered that way. So you're not gonna tighten these all the way down until you have all four bolts in. Okay, so here's a close up with the screen moved to the side. You can see there's a little gap there and a little gap there. You're gonna have the same thing from underneath and that is perfectly normal. That's how these stems are installed. Now you can see the crosshairs I mentioned right here. So with this to be in the center, you just wanna line that right up in the center. So you'll just scoot this around till it's centered and then you can tighten everything down. Now that we've got those tightened down, the next thing I like to do are these three bolts here. We're not gonna tighten these two. We actually want to make sure they're a little bit loose, but basically what we wanna do is tighten this bolt right here on the top. It's typically a five millimeter bolt. And this bolt screws down into a star nut that's pounded into this fork. And basically what that does is the fork is then pulled up into that bolt. That's what holds your whole fork assembly together. Then later, we're gonna turn the bar, bar straight. And once we have the wheel on there, we can see if the bars and the wheel are aligned properly. Then we can tighten those two pinch bolts down on the side. Now at this point, we're ready to put the front wheel on. Now there's something that some of you may have noticed if you haven't put together a bike before, you probably haven't caught it yet. But because the stem is turned to the side, often to fit inside of a box and for everything to clear, sometimes the forks can be positioned like this. Now there's a major problem right here. These forks are facing the wrong way. So if I was to put the wheel on in this direction, my disc brake would be on the wrong side. Now that's not the real problem. The real issue is the geometry of the fork itself. See, all forks have a slight bend or a taper to them. So typically if you have the fork installed backwards, it's gonna be facing back towards the back of the bike just a little bit. But what that's gonna do is move the wheel further back. The bike isn't gonna handle very well for one. And there's also a chance that you might actually hit the, your feet on the front tire when you turn. So make sure that you turn the fork so it's facing the right way. And the way that you know that you've done it correct is that your disc brake should always be on the left. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the forks around. Now, once again, we're not worried about the handlebars being straight with the fork yet. We'll wait until we have the wheel on to figure that out. And I wanna show you a close up of the nuts and the washers on this particular wheel. There are different types for all different e-bikes. This one is bolted on just like the rear wheel. But we've got a nut that goes on the outside and we have a washer. So the washer always goes on the outside of the fork and then the nut. What you could do is grab a couple of pillows or boxes. Uh, you could grab those handlebar jacks. But if you wanna flip the bike over upside down, it makes it a lot easier 
to insert the wheel into the front fork because then you're not trying to lift the bike up and put the wheel in at the same time if you're doing it like this. So then you're just gonna drop it in. Make sure it's seated all the way down if you wanna give your forks a little bit of a tug downward to make sure that they're seated. And then you're gonna take and tighten these all the way up. Now there's also a chance you might have a washer that looks like this instead of just round. Uh, you just wanna point this little tab inward and down. So basically it's out of the way. You will find some forks that actually have a hole specially drilled for that little hook. And if you do have that, then you insert that little hook into the hole on the fork. Basically all that does is if one of the nuts up there comes loose a little bit, that hook keeps your wheel from falling off. And hopefully you notice that it's loose when that happens and you tighten things back up. Now some of you will get a bike that has a quick release. So in this case, we don't have bolts on each side. We've got a nut on one side. There's a little spring on each side. And then you have a lever on this side. I'm holding the nut still on the left side. So we're assuming this is in the fork on the bike. And then you're gonna swivel this lever around until it starts to get tight. Now once it's tight, you take this lever and flip it over and it should be nice and hard, nice and firm to get that lever closed all the way. And that's how you clamp down a quick release. Now one suggestion I have is to always have this facing back or up. If it's facing forward and somehow you get a stick or something on a trail caught on it, it could possibly catch on it and pull it open, popping your wheel off. Down, that's less likely to happen but if it's down, you also don't know if your front wheel is really tight or if this is just loose and hanging down. Now we've got a wrench so we can tighten these bolts down. And typically for most e-bikes, it's gonna be a 15 millimeter up front where there's not a motor and 18 millimeters in the back where there is a motor. Now, if you happen to have a front wheel drive or a all wheel drive, you might have an 18 millimeter up front. But Make sure to always use metric because e-bikes have metric parts. So now we've got our front wheel on. Now we can straighten out our handlebars. So all you're gonna do is, I like to stand at the front of the bike, look down at the wheel, have it lined up with the frame, twist my handlebars until they look straight. And then I can tighten up the two pinch bolts on the side of the stem. Now, pedals are pretty simple. You just twist it on and use a wrench to do the final tightening, except for one major thing. The left pedal has reverse threads. On most pedals, there's gonna be a mark somewhere. It might be on this end, it might be on this end. On these, you can see there's an L right here, and this one has an R on it. So you can tell just by looking at the marking on the pedals, which one is left and right. The other way to remember this is that the threads to be tightened are always moving forward as if the bike is moving forward. Just give it a final little twist with the wrench. Now we'll put the right side on, which has the right hand threads. Now number five that you should do is at this point, you basically have the bike together standing on its own two feet. You should go through and check everything. Now we just tightened up the front wheel so we know that's good. I just tightened up the stem bolts on the front as well as the sides and the top. Next, I would go through the handlebars. So you can kind of wiggle everything. See here, the screen is not tight yet, so we can tighten that down. So our shifter's on there good. Our throttle is tight. Our brakes are on there. Our grips are firmly mounted. Now, just moving back along the bike, we've got the seat, which we just checked. We have the battery cradle. And with most battery cradles, there are different styles, but you always have a few screws or bolts somewhere. This one, we've got a few bolts on the top. We've also got a couple of smaller nuts that kind of hold this cradle together. So I'd recommend double checking those. And then if you have a battery that's a little bit more integrated into the frame, there's usually a mounting piece towards the bottom and up towards the front that the battery snaps into. I would still check the hardware on those two pieces and make sure those are tightened down as well. Otherwise, either one of those could result in your battery coming loose. Now, if you've got a big enough Allen wrench, you could check the crank bolts on each side. 
So there's those two. Uh, this bike has a controller box mounted on the seat post right here. So there's four bolts we could check there. And then probably one of the most critical ones is going to be the bolts on your rear motor. Because if these come loose, that could be catastrophic. These should be tightened down very well from the factory on any e-bike, but it's not a bad idea to go ahead and check them anyways. Now the other thing you should check, since this is an electric bike, in addition to all the nuts and bolts, are the cables. So here we have our motor cable. You want to check that and make sure it's firmly plugged in all the way. You can grab those and push them together. Uh, following up, you can go anywhere underneath the bike if you see any plugs. Uh, same thing from your battery cradle. And then typically there's a wiring harness. Make sure any cables you see are firmly seated because any of those being loose, of course, could cause you a problem. Now I want to jump back to this derailleur a little bit and show you how to adjust it. Now hopefully this is set up correctly right out of the box, but if not, this should be something you should know how to adjust it. Let's say gears one through seven on this bike are working perfectly, but when you go to one, it wants to jump off sometimes. Well, that's where you can use these limit screws. So once again, one is a high and one's a low. You can turn that in so that way it can't go too far. Now the same thing goes for the bottom side. If the chain wants to jump off in between this last gear and the frame, but all the gears are shifting correctly, then you want to tighten that limit screw in a little bit to prevent it from popping off. Now, usually a new e-bike is pretty close and they almost always are shifting correctly. So if it's close, but the gears aren't quite shifting quite right, what I would do is run up and down through the gears and find a gear where if you click it once and then you keep pedaling, it stays in the gear you were in previously and it just doesn't quite jump up or down. And if that's what you have, you can use this adjustment knob right here. Now here's how this little guy works. If we turn it to the left, basically that's gonna move this piece out here. It's gonna move this barrel adjuster out. It's gonna increase the tension there and it's gonna tighten it effectively. I'm gonna turn it back to where it was. Effectively, that's gonna bring the derailleur up towards your lower, your larger gears. If you turn it the other way, it's gonna let it down a tiny bit. Now, if your chain is really floppy or loose, you also have a tension, that's called a B screw. And uh, basically turning that in, you're gonna add tension by moving it this way. It's not gonna be exaggerated that much, but that's the general idea. Number seven, you should know how to adjust your brakes. Once again, one of those things that should be right out of the box. But if it's not, you're gonna have to learn it sooner or later. So I'm gonna grab a tool. Usually what you need is a five millimeter Allen wrench. Now this bike has hydraulic brakes, but this part of the adjustment is kind of the same. Now, if you are looking at the top of your pads, it's gonna be a little hard to see here, but there's a pad there and then there's another one there. And then our rotor, the disc is in between them. Now, if it's off quite a bit to one side or the other, and it needs to be centered, that's what these two bolts are for right here. There's one here and one here because the holes drilled in the caliper are not round. They're actually a slot. So this caliper can move side to side this direction. So if with hydraulic brakes, sometimes this works, not always, but if it works, great. Sometimes what you can do is just loosen these if it's, if it's rubbing on your disc a little bit on one side. So you loosen both of these top bolts, don't touch anything else. You can then squeeze the caliper. So basically you're squeezing the pads onto the disc. In theory, it should be centered. And while you're squeezing it or have a friend squeeze it for you, then you can tighten those two bolts back down. And that will usually get it pretty close. Now for mechanical disc brakes, you have to do that a little bit differently. Um, basically you've got a cable that's coming down that's adjusting one side of the pad. And then if you look in from this side, there's gonna be an adjustment with a five millimeter for this side on the inside pad. But 
you'll want to know how to adjust your brakes, whichever type you have. Now I could go into a whole new video more in depth on how to adjust brakes, so we're not going to get into that. But at the very least, when you get a new bike, what you should do is give the brake a couple of squeezes like this. And then what I would do is pop the wheel off the ground and give it a little spin and see if it spins freely. Now the eighth and final thing you should do before you take your bike for a spin is adjust everything so it fits well. So first you've got the seat, you've got two adjustments here and I get this question a fair amount too. So you have the seat post height. Now there is a limit on most seat posts. There's gonna be a line drawn on that post that says minimum insertion. That means you wanna put the seat at least that far down into the frame. If you do less, you have a danger of cracking your frame. Obviously, that would be very bad. Now, where should your seat height be? I see a lot of people who haven't ridden a bike in a long time try to get on the seat and stand flat-footed on the ground. That's not how the seat post should be. So the problem is, is if I can sit on this bike, on the seat, with my feet on the ground, then by the time I put my feet on the pedals, I'm all the way at the bottom of the pedal stroke, but my knee is still bent quite a ways. And in fact, if I go up to the top of the pedal stroke, you can see that my knee is bent a lot, so much that that would actually be uncomfortable and really hard on your knees. So you wanna have the seat high enough that you can have a decent leg extension. Now, what I mean by that is your knee should be bent just a little bit, not very much. So make sure your seat is up where it's comfortable. Of course, you want it to be safe and be able to get on and off. Uh, but for good exercise, for good knee health, make sure you're getting a decent extension. So when you hop on the bike, you should be able to stand over the frame, not stand over the seat. There is a bolt right here. If you loosen this, you can see there's little splines underneath the seat. That's so the seat can rotate backwards and forwards. So if you find that it's uncomfortable and it's tilted too far this way, you can tilt it forward. Or if you have the opposite, you can tilt it the other direction. So that's what this bolt is for. Loosen it, adjust it to where it's more comfortable, and then tighten it back up. Now the other adjustments you have for comfort are mainly the things on your handlebars. So peel that off so we can see the screen better there. Uh, now this bike comes with an adjustable stem, and that means we can loosen the bolt on this side, and we can tilt the stem up so we get a more upright seating position. And then in addition to that, on any bike, you can adjust kind of the, the tilt of everything else on the bars. So for the brakes, for example, now me personally, I'd wanna have these brake levers tilted down a little bit more. Now to do that, all I would do is take a five millimeter Allen wrench, stick it right here. We would loosen that just enough so that can swivel, and then we can swivel that brake downward a little bit. We have the buttons right here. That's a Phillips on this one, so we can loosen that just enough. We can swivel it. Same goes for the screen. We can loosen that enough to swivel it to where it's comfortable to see when we're riding. And then also basically everything else on the bars. We've got our shifter, we've got our throttle. Now, as an example, the way this is sitting right here, the throttle and the shifter a little close to each other this way. So I would twist the throttle down so it's out of the way of my shifter. I'd sh turn the shifter that way a little, turn my brake down, just make some little tweaks to make everything easily accessible. What you don't want is a button or something to be unreachable while you're riding. Any good e-bike, and this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, any good e-bike should have everything ergonomically set up so you can reach everything and it works properly. I know I have some bikes where the throttle's on the left, some it's on the right, and that's because there's different components and different parts and pieces on different e-bikes. And sometimes we have to move things around to where everything fits right. Make the bike fit you, make it comfortable because it's gonna be more enjoyable to ride and it's going to be safer. Now the battery hopefully will be charged enough that you can take your new e-bike for a spin at this point. So I would put the battery back on, make sure it's safely locked in place and take it for a spin. Now the last thing I could get into but decided not to for sake of time on this video is screen programming. I've done that in a lot of other videos, 
but there may be some minor settings you need to tweak or adjust there as well. But I wanted to cover the basics and make sure that you were comfortable not only buying an e-bike online, but being able to set it up. So if you can do the things that were in this video, then I know that you can buy an e-bike online, have it delivered to your house, get it set up, and go have some fun. Now thanks again for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't listened to the Bolton e-bikes podcast where we talk about even more in-depth things on e-bikes, make sure to go check that out at ebikepodcast.com. I hope everybody is staying safe, having fun keeping distance on their electric bikes, and I'll be back again next week.